Okay, so that oh, I'm talking to nobody. There we are. Okay, so make sure that you go to the daily schedule anytime you need to go back and do anything. If you weren't here for the classroom discussion, make sure you go through the Nearpod on the classroom discussion. If you didn't get four out of four on that, you can go back and redo it. Remember that I need your hard copy medical safety and disclosure. If you forget it at home, you can get a copy here. And then um, that's where I'm going to put your score. Uh, lab safety test. If you didn't get 10 out of 10 and you want to keep taking it, you can keep taking it until you get 10 out of 10, okay? And I'll keep grading it. Last time we did endo and exothermic. We did, um, here's a video of the lecture for that day. You've got your quiz for that day, and daily work came in that right here. On today, you should have done quiz 7.3. We'll have a chance to do that quiz again at the end to see how well you improved. Hopefully you will. Um, your daily work for today goes in here and I will put your lecture up right here. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on the lecture. Um, today you are going to be learning about using a reaction pathway graph distinguished between an exothermic and endothermic reaction. Um, we'll be doing some graph stories. Don't, for, don't worry about the assignment. I forgot to take that off from last year. All right, so the first part is not in your notes, so we're just going to do it from up here. There's three graphs that we're going to talk about and where you guys are going to help me build. So, if I were to do uh, funny graph stories, so these will hopefully stick in your head. Cats versus hotness for a girl. So, depending on how many cats they have, one cat might still be a cute girl. Uh, many cats, hmm. Really, really, really a lot of cats, hmm. Crazy cat lady, maybe. Okay, so, First of all, what we need to do when we were drawing a graph is decide what goes on the x-axis. So on the x-axis, what, what are we putting on the x-axis in most graphs? Is that our dependent or our independent variable? Oh my gosh, what is that? Independent. It's the one that we're changing, so the thing that I'm going to change. So in this scenario, what would you put on the x-axis? What thing would change the number of cats? Probably, yeah. So we're going to put a number of cats along this side. And we can say from 0 to what? 50? Because you've got to be insane to have 50, right? Okay. And then on the side, how are we going to rate the hotness of a girl? How do, how do guys usually rate, or girls usually rate guys? 0 to 10, right? So 0 being ick and 10 being hot. Okay? Now, I'm going to have different people come up and tell me, or draw on the graph here, what they think this graph should look like. Is there a right or wrong answer? No, there's not. So I want you to just come up and try it. Okay? So would you come up and do a graph for me? Would you come up and do a graph for me? So quickly put up what you think that graph should look like. I'll move off to the side. You pick a different color if you want a different color. So we have two different colors up there. <laughs> you can start wherever you want. <laughs> okay. So pick a different color and do your graph. Oh, okay. All right. Alex, why don't you come up and show me what yours would be? We'll put you green. There's not a right answer or a wrong answer. This is all perception, right? Okay. All right. Okay, so as we look at this, we could be able to now come up with a name for this graph. What do you think we ought to name this graph? Like what it says on the top? Give it a name. If you were to come across it in a paper, what would the title of this graph be? Two pass effects like a hot door. OK. 
Okay, that's a long one. Two cats affect how hot you are. Okay, what's another one? I'm not going to write that. That's too long. Last period, they came up with Beauty and the Beast. Okay, so you can come up with something that, that sort of oversees what's going on. Let's go ahead and say goodbye to the crazy cat lady and move on to another little bit. This one, we're going to have two lines on the same graph. We're going to um, do the cats again, but we're also going to add to the cats a number of teeth. So what do you think is my x-axis? What should my x-axis be? Okay, the number of cats are the number of teeth, okay? So I'll put cats in green here as zero. And this time we'll only go to 32 because there's only 32 teeth in your head. And I'll put teeth as being blue. So that means what's going up the side? What's left? What are we trying to put on our graph? Mental health, right? So on this one we would be, do you want crazy down here or up here? Down at the bottom? Okay, crazy is down at the bottom. And sane is up here and most of us are somewhere in between. Right? Okay, so we're going to have some other people now come up and put their graph. And I'm going to tell you which one you're graphing. Teeth or cats. Now, be careful because babies have no teeth. Okay? So I'm going to give you, yes? So is everyone supposed to have like 32 teeth? Because Emma and I both counted. I only have 25. She only has 30. Do you have your wisdom teeth? Oh, no. Yeah, I do. I do. Okay. Well, th yeah, they're supposed to be 32. <laughs> Why don't you go up and do our teeth? And Emma, you go up and do our cats. Let's see what they come up with. The rest of you be thinking of a name for this graph. So sort of see what they do. There might not be any correlation. We're just doing made up graphs right here. So you sort of got to. You can start anywhere. Wherever you want to. Okay, and that was really, which one did I give you, cats? That's all right. We'll just change it real quick to green. Just go back over it. Okay, so that was a green line. Okay, who has an idea for a name for this graph? What would you put on it? Be a little witty. <laughs> Cat got your teeth, okay. Any others? <laughs> you guys are not. All right, so we're going to try one. Maybe this one will get you guys moving. This graph is the need to sneeze or the need to pee. Okay. <laughs> She's looking at me like, what? Okay, so along the bottom, what do you think we'll have on the x-axis? Time. Okay, good. Time. Zero to question mark. It keeps going. So on the side here, what are we going to need? Urge. Okay. Urge. And we'll go 0 to 100%. I'm going to lose it. Okay? We also need to make a key because we're going to do two things. So let's do, I think this one is a really desperate need, so we'll make that red. And since sneezes sometimes produce green gut, we'll do that green. Okay? Well, let's see. Who would like to put a graph for either one of these? Okay? Go. Um... Let's see, who wants to do pee and who wants to do sneeze? You've got to decide. Pick your color when you get up there.
Okay, interesting. All right. So another way you could look at that, I'm going to show you another thing because you guys are choosing straight lines. They don't have to be straight lines. So you need to pee. Oh, I need to really pee. I hold it. I need to really, really. No, I hold it. Oh, it's gone. Okay. Same thing with sneezing. Maybe I don't start with very much down here. I'm like, okay, I need to sneeze. No big deal. I need to sneeze. Oh, no, no. We get ah, chew. I'm done. What happens when they intersect right here and right here? There's a little bit of a disaster. Okay, high need, high urge, and you sneeze, then we got a problem. So we have a problem here and we have a problem here if we hadn't taken like, care of it. Looks like the chemistry part of this, like. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> you guys are going, this is a really weird lesson. So there's different things that we can graph. And the big thing is we need to be able to graph this. So if you were to name this, title this graph, what would you call it? A mess? <laughs> Predicting a mess? Okay, any others? Disaster struck is one of the ones that they come up with, or disaster strikes. Any others? Disaster strikes back. Okay. All right, so we just need to be able to draw a graph and we need to be able to label it. So you have three graph stories that you get to excuse me, that you get to do. They don't have to be straight lines. They can have curves in them. They can have plateaus. I don't want you to talk to your neighbor until I tell you to, but I want you to quickly draw those three graphs with that scenarios, and I want you to label the X and, X, X and Y axes and put some kind of scale on them. It's over there in the general cam. And then I would like you to also um, include a scale, give um, each graph a title, and include a key if you're going to have two things going at the same time. Okay? So we'll give you about five minutes to get that done. I'll put up a little timer again. Keep us on task. I might just give you ten minutes so you can make those graphs really good. Because that's the timer I've got up. There you go. We're going to go over yeah. that. We're going to so go over that. Just, like, just, just make a guess and then you'll have time to do them okay. again. And then these ones, I am still really bad at. Still? Yeah, so. We <laughs> for grams of hydrochloric acid. Would that be 2HCl? Uh huh, it's just HCl. So you go from grams to moles, so you're going to add up hydrochloric acid, put that mass on the bottom, then it goes to one mole. One mole of hydrochloric acid? HCl. Mm -hmm. 
with this one. I feel like um, number of kids should be on the bottom, but the number of kids doesn't really change as much as the cleanliness of the house, right? Well, you're, what you're changing affects something. Oh, okay. Right? Okay, so the messiness of the house only changes because of how Okay, got it. Okay, so then you add that up. Then this next part, you're using the coefficients in front. So in front of the HCl, there's a... Two. So you put two moles of HCl. And what are you trying to get to? Um, moles of magnesium chloride. Okay, so put HCl on the bottom here. And then what's in front of magnesium? Or magnesium chloride. You're trying um, to get magnesium chloride? Nothing. Okay. Just a one. So it'll be, so one, be mole. one mole magnesium chloride. And you'll stop there because they ask for moles. The thing is, like, I, how do I know where to put it? Because I know the grams. So, moles, 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 moles to grams. Yep. That's not this one. That's yep, one. that's this one. Oh, you just is? stop, yep. Mm -hmm. Grams to moles, moles to moles, stop. The last step would be moles to grams. So is every equation going to be like that? Pretty much. It just depends on how far you go. Grams to moles is just one. Grams to moles, moles to moles. How do you know when to stop them? By what they ask you to end with. They so ask, if they you ask to for end grams, with. we go all the way. If they mm -hmm. ask for moles, then we you just stop. stop right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. do a good job with your graphs. You got colored pencils there you can use. Use them. Do you know where Mr. Prompt climbs off his? Do you take um, a
Okay, so let me bring up this that we can look at the different things that you guys might have come up with. So the first one was time of day versus mood. Who thinks they have an awesome graph and would be willing to share? Otherwise, I'm just going to start picking people. Nobody? All right. Goes down to the picking people then. see. Omar, come share your graph, your first one. Just come bring it up here and put it up here. And then tell us about it. it there's no right or wrong, guys. There's no right or wrong. This is opinions. Okay. So just sort of talk it through. Okay. Um, so... I guess I put the mood on the side, and then I put, I don't know, a couple times, mainly like around 12 p.m., like, in, like around this time, is when people start to get hungry, so it's like happiness goes down, mad sort of goes up, I don't know, is that like correlation? Um, so you had two graphs on there because what was the second one? It was mood and time, or... So this is... That is mad, like... How limited. mad you are versus yeah, how happy you, you are. are. Okay. So it's like you're happy along the day, and then when it gets to like 12 p.m., or I guess like evening. Good. You get Looks like, like you're fairly happy most of the time, yeah. then, except when you're hungry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, let's do Michaela. Or Rose, sorry. Oh, I'm going to remember. I'm going to remember, Rose. I'm going to remember. Someday, before the end. Okay, so sort of explain yours. Um, well, this is like when you're like tired or mad and when you're happy, I guess like in the morning, everyone, this is from 12 a.m. to 11.59 um, p.m. You're like sleeping and then you like wake up and some people, I mean, I'm a morning person so I kind of like waking up and then just kind of feel meh and then you have a like, one part exciting and then it just gets, and then at, by the end of the day you're tired. And, okay, so she t titled hers Moody Day, so that's uh, pretty awesome. Okay, um, Gabriel, you want to come up and show yours? Um, well, you start out the day meh because nobody likes waking up. Or at least I don't. I don't know. And then you end it with going to sleep, so I mean, I'm pretty happy when I go yeah, to sleep. You have three happy parts, are that, that breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Awesome, thank you. All right, okay, let's go to the next one, the number of kids versus cleaning. Let's have Samuel, why don't you come up and share yours? just kind of grows at an exponential rate. To dirty or clean? To dirty. Ah, so you just put, oh, that's dirty. That means yeah. dirty. <laughs> okay. Darker lines. All right. Thank you. John, why don't you come up and show me yours? Show the class yours. Mm -hmm. And after John, Kai, would you come and show your, us yours? Um, it's a happy home. A happy home is always clean. Because, <laughs> you know, if you don't clean up, your mom's going to hit you with the chancla. So the more kids you have, the cleaner it will be. Okay. <laughs> okay, Kai. Um, my cleanliness goes down as there's more kids, just, I don't know, <laughs> more kids is more mess. Okay. 
All right, thank you. Go ahead and take your thing. Now you could also have taken that and you could have said, okay, well, with zero kids, pretty clean. One kid, pretty under control. There's a little bit of mess. Two kids, it's getting messier because they're still pretty young. Three kids, mama doesn't have three hands, so it gets a little crazy. Four kids, the older one's starting to get to be able to help clean. And by the time you have five kids, then the older ones can help clean. So I think it gets cleaner as you get more kids. So let's go ahead and go down, that, but it's all in what you've experienced. Time in the car of a person who gets motion sick versus the urge to throw up. Okay, so let's have Hannah, why don't you come show us yours? Oh, we've got two Hannahs. Both of you, come on up. I need two of you at least anyway. I'm forgetting how they have two of you. Which one? The last one. And then just sort of explain what you did. Okay. And make sure it projects. Um, that's not really working. There we go. Okay, I just did from a one to five, five being a lot of urges, and then time in hours. So as the hours go on, you get more urges to puke. Okay. And then mine's basically the same thing. So I did like from a zero to 50 and from zero to one hours in the car. And the longer you're in the car, the more you want to throw up. Okay. Madison, why don't you share yours? I didn't pick Gimpy set because she doesn't need to gimp. <laughs> Um, uh, I just did like the urges one to ten, and how many hours then you get like more sick. Okay. All right. Thank you for those that shared. Um, I don't know about you, but I've been car sick before, and it gets to me. It comes in waves. So I get really, really sick, and I'm like, okay, I don't want to go throw up, and I get it under control, and then I, oh, no, no, barely go throw up. So mine goes up and down and up and down and up and down until I finally, I can't handle it any longer. Okay, so let's talk about, let's get on to the next slide here. How does this all fit in with chemistry? Well, hopefully you were able to decide what thing you are changing, right? And what thing changes because of that, right? So our x and our y axes, be able to label them, be able to know what kind of increments we needed to do in there, and be able to figure out a graph. We have several graphs. The one that we're going to worry about in this unit is called an activation curve or a thermic graph. You need to be able to label the thermic graph with several different things. Now, in your notes, there are several different things that you need to explain what they are underneath. So make sure you're explaining what they are. The first one is potential energy. Potential energy is this. It is the amount that the reactant have or the amount that the product has. Those are potential energies because from the reactant or the product, I can go either forward to the product or I can go from the product back to the reactant. So whatever this reads out here on the graph and over here on the graph, those are my potential energies. One's for the reactant, one's for the product. So right under potential energy, what you think you need to write, it's like the starting point or the ending point, but it's a stable point. It's not when I'm moving. Okay, it's my potential as a product. It's my potential as my reactant. The activation energy is the energy that I need to get from my reactants all the way up to the top of the curve. We call this E of A, and that's the energy that is needed to go all the way around. Okay, whoa. <laughs> I'm going to have them go take it out in my car. Right now? Yeah, because I don't lift very well. <laughs> So let me get the keys and then I'll have you go out. Is there any tricks I need to know about it? Sorry. Do you know any tricks of it? Add oil. Add um, oil. Add those. Okay. Don't spill those. Don't spill it's those. Mess. Okay. Turn everything on. Okay. Pop. Got it. I think I can handle that. Yep. 
extra yummy stuff. Extra yummy stuff. Yeah, that's in here too. Oh, yum. Okay. Flavor call. Okay. Um, there are bags, but they're kind of crappy ones, so you might want to okay. think about looking at those. All right. Hi, everybody. Say hi. This is Mr. Pline. What class is this? This is Gen Chem. Gen Chem? Mm -hmm. You got people that are this smart in Gen Chem? <laughs> Come on. And then there's some kind of not so smart. You gonna be okay to go out and be nasty? Okay, just be real careful so it doesn't tip over. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, for an activity I've got going at my house, so we're borrowing. <laughs> Not right now. Okay, so let's go on. Um, so we got our activation energy. We can also have an activation energy for the reverse reaction. So I can go from my products to the top of the curve. We call that E of A prime. That's the activation energy for the reverse reaction. Okay? Yeah. So you need to write down under activation energy what that represents. So from a reactant to the top of the curve, if I'm going on the forward reaction, or from the product to the top of the curve if I'm going on the reverse reaction. The activated complex is this top of the curve. Okay, that's the activated complex, that top of the curve. That's like if I'm pushing a ball up the street, up the hill, and I get to the top of the hill before it goes down the other side, that's that point of turn, change. Okay, the reaction pathway is the line of the graph. So it's the way that we follow. So when we were doing our graphs of our, of our own, it was filing back and forth. Okay? The enthalpy, or delta H, is different for an exothermic and an endothermic. What did we learn last time with exo and endothermic? Remember? Nope. <laughs> okay, yes. Good. Do you remember which one was which? Okay, if you listen to the words endo and exo. So endo I'm putting in energy and exo I'm taking out energy. So here's my reactants, here's my products. Did I put in energy or take out energy? I put in energy. So this one is the endothermic graph right here. So this one where my reactants, my products are lower, is it getting rid of or adding in? It's getting rid of. So this is my exothermic graph. Okay, if I have a negative delta H, that means I have lost energy and I've got an exothermic. If I have a positive delta H, that means I've gained energy and it's become endothermic. That difference is between my reactants and my products. So I just take the difference in those two numbers to get my delta H. And my pen just fell apart. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give um, pens to people, and I'm going to have you come up. And on the second graph right here, I'm going to have you add um, different things. Okay. So I'm going to have you add um, activation energy of the forward reaction, activation energy of the reverse reaction. When they're done, I would like you to do um, the potential energy of the reactants, potential energy of the products. I would like you to circle the activated complex. And I would like to have you write on the pathway, just write the pathway on the pathway. Yep. What did I activation energy of the reverse reaction. Yes. So activated complex is the top part, that curve. Delta H is the change in the reactants and the products. A negative one is exothermic, positive is endothermic. 
just change it, change from reactants to products. That's it. Okay, so the rest of you that I gave something to, go ahead and go up and wait for a pen to become free. So you can write. You can change the color if you'd like. Negative is EXO. No, you did E of A prime. You're supposed to E of prime from the back. So, so this one, was, this is E of A prime. So put a P, a uh, little dot here. That's for the backward reaction, just a little. That's the backward reaction. So if I'm going this way to this way, that'll be with the activation energy. This one right here is going from the reactants to the products. Oh. The amount of energy I have to get up over the hill to, before it can go down the other side. Okay, so next group up. So am I done then? You're done. Okay. <laughs> next group up. If, you, if I gave you something, come up and put it up. Oh, I only gave you one of them. Which did I give you? So label the one I gave you. Just put PE on it. Okay. You, you can write the same color. You don't have to if you want. Don't want to. Yep. Sometimes it is, it's been a little bit uh, pain in the, yeah. Okay, good. So we sort of, I hope, are getting what we need to. If you haven't got those labeled, get those labeled really quickly on your graph. And then we're going to go to the next page. Do we need to wait here for a minute or we got it? Okay, we okay to go forward? No, nope, just a few more minutes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you locked it back up, right? And thank you again. Okay, going forward, yes? We okay to go forward? Okay, so here's another one. Same kind of curve, but we're going to add one more thing to it. It's called the catalyst. The catalyst is like a matchmaker. How many of you have ever watched Fiddler on the Roof and know about matchmaker? What, do, what does a matchmaker do? Don't make me sing that song. You won't like it. Makes matches. Okay. So the mama or the papa pay the matchmaker to go out and make a match. Um, the daughter or son say, please matchmaker, make me a good match. So this is what I want. Please try and find it. And they put them together. In America, what we do is we go out on dates, lots and lots and lots of dates before we find the one, finally, right? How much expense do you think we put into it? How much effort do you think we put into it compared to the matchmaker? A lot, right? You can go on thousands and thousands of dates before you find the one. Matchmaker, you're matched. Done. Old, old school. Okay, so what happens here is the matchmaker lowers the amount of energy or the amount of money we have to put in to get the reaction going. So we have a matchmaker or a catalyst. We still end up with the same... I didn't spell that right. Catalyst, I forgot the AL. Um, we still end up with the same product but it lowers the activation energy. So with a catalyst, let me fix that. It's going to drive me nuts. Cat L Y S T. So the activation with a catalyst is just from here to here, where before the activation energy was from here to here. So I can make the reaction go forward a lot faster with a lot less energy. Okay? They do this when they make ammonia. They have to have a catalyst, otherwise it takes more energy to make the ammonia than what you have in the product, and it's really sort of sad. 
We would still label everything else like we could on this. We would still say, yes, this is the activated complex, but here the activated complex could be down here with a catalyst. Okay? we just get to it faster. Everything else would be labeled the same. Potential energy of the reactants, potential energy of the products. Um, e of A prime for the reverse reaction would be from here to here with the catalyst. Okay? So we're able to do things with a lot less energy. Everybody okay with that? So catalyst, we just lower the curve. All right. So now we've got this graph, and we should be able to, in our minds, be able to figure out what each of these things are. So let's look at it. What is the enthalpy of the reactants? That's like saying, what is the potential energy of the reactants? So what is it from this graph? 20. Don't just put 20, though. We need units. So it's 20 kilojoules per mole, right? Okay, what's the enthalpy of the products? You're just reading off the graph now. 50. Good. And it's 50 kilojoules per mole, right? Is that green okay, or should I change to blue? I know it's sort of hard to see far away. Okay, what is the delta H? What's the change? What was the change? Good. How'd you get it? Right, we just want this distance from here to here to get delta H. Is it a positive or is it a negative? That's important. Is it a positive or is it a negative? It's positive because I have to put it in, right. So positive, and I would write the 30 kilojoules per mole. So I can see that it's positive. Okay, is this exothermic or endothermic? Endo, how did you know? It ends up higher, right? So I have to put hot energy in, so it's endo. I'm going to do one more that's not on there that you can add to because you're going to be asked it. What is the activation energy of this reaction? What's the activation energy? How did you get the 80? Right, so we had to go from here all the way up to here, and we wanted that distance, whatever it was. That was E of A, right? And so he said he took 100, and he minus 20, and that's how he got to the 80. So over here, we would put 80 kilojoules per mole is our activation energy. We could also ask, at what point, at what energy, is our activated complex? What would we say? 100. Good. Um, and we could do the activation energy for the reverse reaction, which would be from here to here, which would be what? E of A prime. What would that equal? 50. Good. The 100 minus the 50, and we'd end up with 50 kilojoules. So there's a lot of things that we can get from the, um, the graph. All right. So you have two pages. You got two more graphs down below here that you're going to be doing, and then there's a back page to that that you're going to be doing. Then I would like you to retake the quiz now that you know what you're doing, and I would like you, if you haven't got four out of four on your Nearpod for safety, go back and do it. If you haven't got ten out of ten on your quiz for safety, go back and do it. If you have not got, um, I think it's ten out of ten on seven point one quiz or seven point two, go back and do those. So you have a little bit of time to go back and do stuff. Um, we've got 20 minutes. you got your iPads here that you can upload. Time is yours. If you need help, let me know. All right, let's get you going. Let's go to the press escape.